Abu Dhabi. This growing city now hosts its fourth Judo Grand Prix and the first on the IGF World Circuit since the events of the Olympic Games transpired in London. There, Judo shone brightly in the international spotlight as it crowned 14 new Olympic champions. Now it's back to earth as the run-up to the next Olympiads in Rio de Janeiro commences. The hard work starts here and after the drama of London, the world's media is swarming to see who will emerge as favourites for gold in four years' time. At the draw, IJF President Marius Visa spoke about judo's growing role in affecting positive change in the world. And on the eve of the competition, all eyes were on some of the young fighters in action. But first, there was a surprise entry under 66 kilograms. Two-time world champion and world number one at under 60 kilograms, Sobarov. Having failed to take gold in London, he was fighting up a weight here and was drawn against fellow number one, Gadanov. An enthralling contest was decided by a moment of magic from the Uzbek, countering Gadanov's trademark Koichi in style, and sending the Russian packing. In the semi-final, he faced Japan's Kadira, a young fighter who showed plenty of promise earlier this year when he won the Baku Grand Prix. Well, Sobarov's really got to up his work rate now. He can't afford another penalty. Otherwise, there'll be points on the board for Kadira. Kadira has the sleeve, looking for the Sianagi. There's the Sianagi. Oh, nice technique there from Kadira. Right in the way underneath. Sobarov is on the back foot here. So there it is. He gets the second one, and that puts points on the board there for Kadira. So now Sobarov has got to do something, but you can never write Sobarov off. Try to pull the arm in, trying to feed that leg through at the same time, but he can come from any angle, Sobarov. And Kadira just can't rest on his laurels. There, big Ashi wasn't there from Sobarov. Big Sasai, and he just gets the Wazari. That puts him ahead. Now looking for the Juji Katami. Brilliant stuff again from Sobarov. Kadira, well, was pushing forwards. And look at that, Sasai just blocks it, rotates him over, and, well, did well to avoid the if bump, but it was enough to put Sobarov through. Looking good at the new weight, but can he go all the way? Azerbaijan's Sheikh Alazada lay in wait in the final after throwing Japan's Moeno beautifully in the semi-final. Really going to be an interesting one. Sobarov already beaten Gadinov, the world number one at uh, 66 kilograms. But uh, Sheikh Alazada is a different ball game completely. What's going to happen? Sobarov always looks very cool, calm, and collected. And he can throw from any angle. But watch out for Sheikh Alazada. Very explosive. Likes to go for the legs. But of course, that restricts him here. Now what's gonna happen? Look at this, he drives him over! And he scores a Wazari right off the bat. And uh, Sobarov couldn't do anything about it. He pulled that shoulder in, Sheikh Elizada, and had to choose his moment there to drop. A bit borderline, but drives him over for Wazari. Sheikh Elizada pulling that arm in again, takes him back, and it's all over. Sobarov loses it, and that was an Ippon this time. And again, pulls the arm in, chooses his moment, drives Sobarov backwards. Sobarov didn't really get into the match. He was outgripped and outpowered in the higher weight category. And Sheikh Alazada, look how he uh, grabs the leg here, drives him backwards, rolls him onto his back, and Sobarov, world number one at 60 kilograms, meets his match at the higher weight. Another big name was in action at under 100 kilograms. 
Russia Samoilovic missed out on London and had to watch on as his replacement, Kaibaleev, became Olympic champion and the poster boy for a fantastic Russian medal haul, which saw them top of the medal table with three golds. After his win, Kaibaleev was personally congratulated by Vladimir Putin, who is himself an avid judoka. But Samoilovic is actually ranked higher than Kebeleev at world number two, and here in Abu Dhabi, he was out to prove a point. In the semi-finals, he faced off against Kobayashi of Japan and stunned him with a powerful hip throw for it. His opponent in the final, Uzbekistan Sayadov, was unfortunately forced to concede due to injury, giving Samoilovic a win which moved him to world number one. One weight down at under 90 kilograms, and Samoilovic's teammate Voprasov also topped the podium. He was on fire all day, and in his opening bout was clinical on the ground. His Mongolian opponent left an arm exposed, and Voprasov was on it like a flash, hyperextending the elbow joint and forcing the submission. In his semi-final, he used quick feet to score upon, anticipating his opponent's attack and countering with his own to book a place in the final. There, he was up against Juria of Uzbekistan and won by upon again, this time with a hip throw, Chimata. And with the versatility he displayed here, Voprasov could become a real contender come Rio. At under 73 kilograms, Russia also had a new Olympic champion. His name is Ezeev, who beat Japan's Nakaya in the final in London. In action in Abu Dhabi was his understudy, Kodzakov, who found himself in the final against the under 66 silver medalist from London, Ungvari, who had earlier pulled out a breathtaking Koichi Makikomi in his semi-final contest. He could not, however, repeat the feat in the final, went through a war with his Russian counterpart. Kotsakov is a brawler and with the weight advantage in his favour, he proved the stronger of the two fighters, outgripping Ungvari and beating him to the attack. After the contest went to golden score, the referee decided enough was enough and penalised the Hungarian to end the bout in favour of Kotsakov, who moved up from 15 to 9 World rankings. The lightest male category of under 60 kilograms is where Russia's third newly crowned Olympic champion fights. It was Galstian who started the Russian ball rolling in London on the first day of judo. But in his way, Russia have another big thrower. His name is Mudrinov. Mudrinov specializes in one technique, Uranagi, where he powerfully suplexes his opponent onto their backs. The natural strength and wrestling pedigree of the Russians makes this throw a favourite for many of them, and Mudrinov has it down to an art. Lurking in wait for his opponents, he forces them to come to him, and then pounces. He snaps his arms around their waist and explodes upwards with his hips before driving them backwards onto the mat. In the final, he was up against Papanashvili of Georgia, would the specialist strike again? Oh, Mudrinov in white, and he's on the form of his life. Really, what a tournament he's having. Uranagi everywhere. So certainly, Papinash really got to be careful. Look at that. He's searching for that arm around the back straight away. Mudrinov wants to get the contact, wants to get the lift. But uh, watch out, Papinashvili, very explosive as well. Catches the sleeve, go left and right. Mudrinov, oh, it's all over! Oh, oh, oh. That arm went round the back, and the lift that he got, he's now won every fight by Ippon. With the same technique, look at the lift there, and this time, he assists it over with the leg. Amazing stuff, he controls the head, controls the back 
and it's 100% commitment. Drives the head backwards, lifts with the other leg, and the hips, look at the lift with the hips. And that is Uranagi at its best. And the scary thing is, the Russian number one, the Olympic champion, is at home. In the lightest female category of under 48 kilograms, it was Brazil who celebrated an Olympic gold medal as Menezes wrote her name down in the history books. In her absence, another Brazilian featherweight took gold in Abu Dhabi. Newcomer Chibana won a tactical fight against Rossinu of Belgium, in which she neutralized her opponent's attacks and put in more of her own. The win meant she rocketed from 35 to 19 in the world rankings. Another gold for Brazil came at under 70 kilograms. World number six, Patella, continued her recent assault on the category with a Grand Prix gold to add to her Grand Slam title from Moscow earlier in the year. In contrast to Jibana, she finished things in style with a big Uranagi Ippon against Austria's Graf in the final. She's now up to number four in the world rankings. History was made in Abu Dhabi after Mr. Wilfred Lemk, United Nations Special Advisor on Sport for Development and Peace, was present to sign a contract with the President of the IJF, Mr. Marius Visa. The work between the UN and the IJF will mainly be carried out through the IJF's Judo for Peace Commission. A special award was presented to Mr. Lemk to commemorate this historic agreement which seeks to further harness the power of Judo to bring about positive social change worldwide. With formalities complete, the two settled down to watch the judo. One fighter of interest was Kel Mending, a fabulous judoka whose lifelong dream to compete under the flag of her native Kosovo was realized in April this year, when Kosovo was officially recognized as an IJF member country. Here, she wasted no time coming through the early rounds in blistering fashion. In the final, she faced world number four, Miranda of Brazil. Calmendi fought hard, dominating the Brazilian throughout with superior strength and gripping to come out on top. In defeating Miranda, she defended her title from last year and ensured the Kosovo's national anthem would be heard by judo fans worldwide for the first time as she stood atop the podium. It's good, you know, when you, when you fight and everybody knows that you are from Kosovo. Everybody knows your country. I feel great. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy and I want to say thank you to Mr. Marius Fizer. Uh, thank you so much. It's such a great feeling to, to, to hear uh, the name of my, of my country is, is, sec is for t first time. Now they know that I'm from Kosovo. It's, it's great. Announcing her arrival on the international scene at under 63 kilograms was the young Austrian, Anta Wazaccia. In her semi-final contest, she produced a classy piece of Ashiwaza to level her Swedish opponent. In the final, against De Cintio of France, she pulled out another spectacular moment of judo to take the top spot. It was her first World Circuit goal, and with judo like this, there could be many more. The final of the under 78 kilograms category was between Robert of Canada and Powell of Great Britain. It was decided in the last 10 seconds when Robert countered Powell's attack by pushing her onto her back. It moved her up to 17 in the world rankings. The heaviest female category, it was Andia of France who upset the inform Alphaman of Brazil to take gold. She maintained a high attack rate throughout the fight and won comfortably on penalties, moving her up to world number 15. At over 100 kilograms, the man looking to help his country bounce back from the worst ever Olympic performance was Mimose. He took gold in style with some beautiful traditional Japanese style judo. In his semi-final he used Ojigari, 
reaping his opponent's legs away from the inside and progressed to the final. There, he was up against Moura of Brazil, and this time used a spectacular Ogaruma, wheeling Moura over his leg to secure the win. Mamosi moved up to world number 17, but he has a long way to go if he wants to bring home that all-important Olympic title at plus 100 kilos for Japan. In the final, the technique I used was my favourite throw, so I'm glad all the practice was playing on. A young fighter turning heads at under 57 kilograms was junior world champion Rassevu of France. She faced off in the final against Zeltner of Austria. The Austrians started strong and caught Resivu early on to go a Yuko up. But Resivu refused to crumble and instead came back with one of the throws of the tournament, displaying incredible hip strength to lift Zeltner high in the air with Uchimata before sending her crashing down cleanly onto her back. She showed here that a big thrower always has a chance and that she'll be one to look out for over the next four years. But the youngster really causing a stir in Abu Dhabi was in action at under 81 kilograms. Brazil's Panelba is fast maturing into an exciting, well-rounded fighter. In Rio, just before the Olympic Games, he took his first Grand Slam gold. In the final against the tough, experienced American Stevens, he showed that he has a good tactical judo brain as well as the guts to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best. The current number one in Brazil at under 81 kilograms, the world number three, Galera, had a disappointing game and failed to medal as Korea's Kim brought home the gold. Is Penelva the one to take over from Galera and challenge the Koreans' dominance in the future? Brazilian blitzed through his elimination contest, dispatching his first opponent with a drop shoulder throw for him. Next, he showed his speed as he sidestepped his opponent's attack and in the same movement launched his own to score was Aaron. And to show it wasn't a fluke, a few minutes later he did it again, only this time to more devastating effect. Ippo. Judo like this is a sign of real talent. Waiting for Penalba in the semi-final would be the world number 12, the powerful Moldovan, Toma, who looked in typically dangerous form, thrown with the big Uchimata in his earlier contest. How would Penalba cope with him? Well, Toma has been on good form today, but so's Penalba. And Penalba, just 22 years of age, Definitely one to look out for because he's going to be really vying for that number one spot in three years, eight months' time. And now Penelba looking for the Cianagi. And Toma does well to block it. Good pace here from uh, Penelba. Good tactics. Good technique as well. One handed Cianagi attempt there. Didn't quite get the rotation. Now into golden score, and Toma is looking very tired. Well, bronze medalist, and a great throw. Oh, now what's going to happen? It's all over. Well, Toma definitely ran out of steam there, just into the golden score, and Panalba just waited his moment. Look at that. Great variation of technique there. Uranagi this time, got the drop Sienagi, scored with the... Sakeshi, Taitoshi Sakeshi, and now Urinagi, and Panalba is through to the final. In the final, Panalba would face his toughest challenge yet. The Russian world number eight, Magomedov, is a massive thrower with a very dangerous Uchimata that he showed off in the earlier rounds against Panalba's teammate, Serio. In his semi final, against Safguliev of Azerbaijan, Magomedov showed just how powerful and explosive he is, lifting his opponent cleanly into the air before slamming him down into the map for Ifo. With judo like this, the Russian would pose a real threat to Penalba. Would the young Brazilian, 
rise to the occasion. His Highness Sheikh Hazai bin Zayed Al Nayan, with Mr. Marius Visa, sitting down to watch the judo. Well, Magomedov, we know, is a massive throw. Penalba, though, he's the young pretender. There's the Uchimata, and Penalba's got to make sure that he kills that dead every time. I know for a fact that Magomedov, if he can't get the grips that he wants, and you can see there that he's looking to get lift with the leg, Penalba does well to stop it, and the more he stops it, the more it'll go away from Magomedov. Ouchi Gary there, lovely driving. Ouchi Gary there from Penalba. Magomedov knows he's in a fight here. It was hand assisted, but he got drive first of all. Nice Ouchi Gary. The Magomedov can't get near with the Uchimata, and look what happens there. Tries to snake the leg through and uh, almost gets countered with the Uranagi. So Panalba getting the measure of Magomedov's technique. Nice Tayatoshi there, though, from Magomedov. Panalba, Sumagesh attempt. So doing well to quell the Uchimata of Magomedov. Magomedov is looking there as if to say, what have I got to do against this guy? There's the Uchimata, and you can see how easily he avoids that, Panalba. Really good balance, good hips, good defense. Got the uh, sleeve pin now. Looking for the Osoto, hand assisted. And now Magomedov has got to come forwards and he's starting to look a little bit despondent. And it happened uh, before, I've seen it before with him. Oh, and he's been countered. And it was a weak attempt at Uchimata. Panalba counters him, and he gets a Wazari. There's the Uchimata, no hands, couldn't latch himself on, couldn't get control, and he gets countered. So now Magomedov's got it all to do, and he's got to score an Ippon to win this. And Panalba shows that he's got great tactics as well. Panalba does it. He broke Magomedov's spirit. He stopped the Uchimata from Magomedov. Magomedov couldn't do anything about it. A weak Uchimata attempt there from him. And he gets rolled over and countered onto his side for a Wazari. Panalba shows his class. He's going to be there in four years' time, I'm sure. I think this was a very strong competition. There were athletes in my category like Sergei Utoma and Magomedov. They are very strong in the category, but I managed to defeat them today. I fought well. I think I'm becoming more mature, and this result is a sign of that. I'm maturing both in and out of judo. We have Leandro Galero in Brazil, who's very high in the rankings. For the World Championships, we can take two athletes, so I hope it's going to be myself and Leandro representing Brazil. And who knows, in a few years, my biggest dream is the Olympics in Rio in 2016. Fighting at home with my family is a dream for me. It's what I dream of every night when I go to sleep. Well, that's it from Abu Dhabi. Sobarov surprised Gadinov, but bit off more than he could chew with Shikalazada. The Russian number twos were out to prove a point and showed why head coach Gamba has one of the best and hardest jobs in the world. Penelba showed he has both the brawn and the brains to rumble with the best. Judo fans, watch this space. And through the sport of judo, Kel Mendy is making history for her country, Kosovo. Join us next from Brazil and the tropical climate of Salvador de Bahia, where the judo crazy public have a treat in store as they play host to the drama and excitement of World Team Championships.